Five decades, ten schools, two campuses, three institutes, a monumental library, and a modern shopping mall. In 2016, the University of Zambia turns 50. Established in 1966 on this vast piece of land, the University of Zambia was born with initially 312 students, two schools, and a staff of less than 100. The University of Zambia, fondly known by most as UNZA, was born out of the ambition of our founding fathers to build an education system that will answer to many of the challenges the newly born country was to face in order to find its rightful place and be accepted in the League of Modern Nations. The situation prior to independence forced our forefathers and mothers to fight relentlessly to see Zambia achieve its independence. In urban areas, women without marriage certificates were not allowed to enter the urban areas. In every province, they, 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 they had a place where they were taking those people, if they are trying to come to their husbands, they were taking them back to their respective areas. So hence, for the minors, some had marriage inconvenience because of that. Dr. Kenneth Kaunda had just won the 1964 elections in which the final blow to colonialism was delivered. It is believed at independence in 1964, the country had only 100 graduates. This number was insignificant to mount the kind of policy and planning strategies that the new government needed to achieve their promises to the citizens of the new Zambia. The University of Zambia was uh, a product of a vision a visionary leadership, a new, vibrant, young and vibrant uh, new leaders who fought for the independence of our country from colonial rule, from the British uh, occupation of more than nearly 100 years, uh, to free this country so that we can govern ourselves. And uh, uh, this team of leaders, then led by uh, Dr. Kaunda, had a number of... Uh, Dr. Kaunda was able to appoint a number of intellectuals to his cabinet. There were 14 of them, and I think uh, more than uh, three quarters of these had university degrees. Even the fact that we had only 100 Zambians who had degrees at independence, but he was able to, to get people from there. And this is the team which had a vision and a dream for a Zambia of the future. Remember, there were only 100 graduates at independence. They said there is no way in which we can build this country to higher heights if uh, there are that few graduates uh, in the country. Hence, the need for building a university. Two years down the line, it was clear that the country needed to train its own human resource and the University of Zambia was created. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is that if you look at all the very developed countries, what you are going to see is uh, the research and development component of every nation determines how much that nation is going to progress. And most of this research is supposed to occur, I say it's supposed to occur within the framework of a university. And obviously as much as we would want the private sector to be involved in this particular aspect, which is probably one of the future things that are going to be happening. It is important, especially in the initial stage, to have a very uh, clear uh, policy guidelines and policies and, and directions, and even financing arrangements that make the, your higher education very, very important. Because if you, we do not have a functional higher education institute to do research and development and innovation will be basically running in circles. So as far as I'm concerned, clearly, apart from the policy dimensions that I spoke about, I think it is important for every government 
to consider universities as a critical component of the development of a country. Because that's where you get all your human resources. That's where you get your, your research. Uh, that's, that's, in fact, the place where I can say that the horizons of your youth and the rest of it are, 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 are expanded. Back in 1966, the then new university appointed Dr. D.G. Anglin as its new vice chancellor. While Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, who was head of state, then doubled as chancellor of the university. Soon after its launch, the University of Zambia started to attract some of the most prolific scholars and statesmen who have since become warmarks of our regional development. The university has produced presidents, captains of the industry, and very accomplished internationally renowned researchers. The known figures that have passed through the university include Yes, we have had uh, uh, persons who came to study at the University of Zambia. Uh, some of them at this in '66 and beyond. Some of these uh, came as uh, student uh, refugees from Zimbabwe. Zambia was an open country and is an open country. They came, for example, ran away the University of Rhodesia in Yasaland, which was based in Harare, then Salisbury, expelled quite a number of students. Most of them came and they found refuge in Zambia to study here. Um, I remember somebody called Sam Geza, uh, Mishia Karara. A number of them went back into their country, into Zimbabwe. And then we actually, in the, including the, uh, the current vice president of Zimbabwe, uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, he studied at the University of Zambia. Many of these people who were involved later into uh, building parastatals in the country, permanent secretaries in this country, uh, some even uh, got up to ministerial levels, a number of graduates from the University of Zambia of my time. But most of them were in the professional area, and including teaching at the university. I mean, I do recall that uh, the first group of SDFs had uh, personalities like uh, uh, prof now the Professor Mvunga, Patrick Mvunga. Uh, there was Munandulo in the law school. Uh, there was Benny Mwene. Uh, who became Professor Mwene. Uh, then there was uh, um, uh, there was uh, some are late. Well, we should be proud that uh, uh, two of the f five presidents uh, uh, of Zambia have been uh, have been graduates of the University of Zambia. The uh, late President Manawasa was a graduate from the law school. The current president, Edi Wachangwarungu, is a, uh, a graduate of the University of Zambia. So we, the mark of the university is there from the political arena, uh, cascading all to, into the areas of the, especially the professions. The university has been growing ever since producing some of the most accomplished citizens, now heading and leading very strategic institutions. Remember, uh, when the university started, there were very few graduates. In fact, you could count them on your fingers. If I remember, there was only one medical doctor, a few teachers here and there. Now, look at this. Uh, literally, every secondary school is uh, being run by a graduate. Uh, at either bachelor's or master's degree, you go to the various uh, uh, institutions of learning, whether in the private sector or the public sector, they are all from the University of Zambia. The majority of CEOs in the private sector that are Zambians. Have, so from that particular context, we have been, in terms of increasing numbers and coverage, it, the university has done very, very well. I mean, where do you get <coughs> people like uh, Professor Chintu, who's father of pediatrics, people like <coughs> <coughs> Professor Jalasani, Joe Kasonde, these people are landmarks as far as historic event of University of Zambia is concerned. Peter Mwaba, the 
present permanent secretary is the only African to have received the the tropical disease award from London. So you know these are achievements. And I was one of the first group to come to the University of Zambia in 1966. At the University of Zambia, I think that I was the only girl in the school of medicine. And it was quite interesting that a lot of people asked, what do you feel to be the only girl in the school? And it never even dawned to me that I was the only girl. The only thing I remember that we were the first ones and we had to work very hard to become very good doctors. Five decades on, the University of Zambia has reached an enrollment level of over 31,000 students. The University of Zambia still remains the largest university in the country, both in size and student population. We need to move away from thinking to have a university, one must go to greatest road campus or to the School of Medicine or CBU or Mlongoshi University in person and, and camp there. We need to think more of um, online learning, which we've introduced and I'm, I'm proud to, to, to announce that. We also need to think of um, satellite um, campuses around um, the country, something that I'm proud to also say the University of Zambia is already working on. And then we may need to also consider have setting up certain schools in, away from the main university. The way we have School of Medicine away from the main campus, we could also have School of Agriculture, School of Education, and that's something again that we are we are working on. So I'm sure that that's something that would um, decongest um, our university. Then we could also enter into collaborative um, relationships and arrangements with um, providers of tertiary education to to run some of our programs. With the initial vision to see every Zambian with determination get an education. The university offered free education to all who went through its doors. I am uh, Gladys Nekairo Mutukwa. I'm a lawyer by profession, one of the first few women graduates in law school from the University of Zambia. And I've always been proud of that fact. Because I will say, quickly say, after the University of Zambia, I went and did my master's in law in the States. And in the States, to go into law school, you had first of all to have a first degree. But for us, we had our first degrees without the previous one. So in my master's degree, I was the, in class with people who were doing, in fact, their third degree. And I was so proud that I was coming from Africa, I was in the States, and I was getting much higher marks than even a number of the Americans. And that, for me, gave credit to the rest of Zambia. The university prides itself in providing quality opportunities for all with the ability to succeed. Great things have started here and UNSA has grown into a powerful regional university with global impact and the international reputation unparalleled by a university of its size. The University of Zambia has distinguished itself by attracting students from diverse countries and continents. The university boasts of students from as many as 30 different countries from both within the African continent and beyond. If you compare where we are starting from to where we are now, there has been quite a number of activities or projects that have taken place. Um, not long ago, uh, we didn't have so many schools. Uh, as you know, that uh, the university started with about three schools, but right now we are talking about uh, ten schools or more. We never had School of Veterinary Medicine. We never had School of Veterinary Medicine, and uh, for those who wanted to do vet medicine, they had to go to Nairobi. But uh, the government of Zambia, uh, in collaboration with uh, Japan, you know, they put up that. Uh, School of Veterinary Medicine. In also, uh, School of Agricultural Sciences, we had Canada CEDA. They also assisted to put up that uh, school. And then things have continued in, this, in a similar manner. I mean, we've put up quite a number of infrastructure, although at a slow pace, but at least uh, we are somewhere. 
With increased demand for quality higher education in the country comes also the demand for more spaces and trainers to achieve this common shared goal. The university is trying its best to keep up the pace with the demand for quality higher education but cannot on its own accomplish this huge national task. The university is therefore seeking for partnerships and cooperation with both government and the private sector actors. I think it is important for every government to consider universities as a critical component of the development of a country because that's where you get all your human resources, that's where you get your, your research, uh, that's, that's in fact the place where I can say that the horizons of your youth and the rest of it are, 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 are expanded. Windsor stands out as the leader in research and uh, graduate studies. We have thousands of master's students and hundreds of PhD students and we're building that leading sector of Zambian society. The government of the Republic of Zambia has for the past 50 years been supporting the University of Zambia in providing education to its citizens. This has not been an easy task knowing the government has so many other competing needs. 50 years ago we were the only university and it was important that government you know was in charge and, and they, they run the institution but now we're in a competitive environment and um, now there are many Zambians who've been able to access education so maybe there's need for more autonomy now so that UNSA can be able to also offer programs at competitive um, tuition rates and competitive um, fees and also be able to make certain decisions without necessarily falling back on government all the time. With increasing numbers of students seeking higher education, the University of Zambia has become overwhelmed with the prospective students who want to enter the university every year. This pressure is not just a worry to the university management alone, but the government too. We have quite a number of challenges as a university. And uh, this is because the university has grown. And uh, it has grown in terms of numbers of students that uh, we admit. And that is against uh, uh, the growth of the infrastructure. So then we do face those problems. And um, for quite some time, um, I think there's been a lot of emphasis on the primary education, primary and secondary. And then, um, of course, you, the authorities needed also to put in place where these people would go after their you know, initial uh, education levels. Uh, so the growth of the university hasn't been uh, in tandem with uh, the growth at primary and secondary school. The government is concerned that if something is not done, the university might lose its place as the number one provider of higher education in the country and beyond. I think it is important for every government to consider universities as a critical component of the development of a country because that's where you get all your human resources, that's where you get your, your research, uh, that's, that's in fact the place where I can say that the horizons of your youth and the rest of it are, 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 are expanded. The university, as envisioned by our forefathers, is not just an academic place but also a place of community service. The university should be the source of inspiration and hope to our citizens. For the past five decades, how has the university distinguished itself? The past five decades has not just seen the growth in the number of students enrolled, but also the number of schools, departments and directorates. Ordinary citizens have been at the center stage of this great national pride. People from all walks of life contributed to the building of the university. University of Zambia is our university, is my university because 
It was built on the stones of the people of Zambia. So thank you very much to our fathers who were there then. And the only thing we can help pay tribute is by what we have done. So thank you for giving us the privilege. But I would like to tell all of us that when you are given a privilege, don't take it for granted. You have to give back because these people worked very hard to make us be where we are. And I would hope that uh, we give back to what they gave us. The university has faced some tough times and has been thrown in the furnace for long periods of time. To the administrators, these are defining moments. The difficult moments have helped the university to reposition itself. I'd love to see the University of Zambia achieve its vision of being a world-class institution that provides um, higher learning and, 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 and knowledge as well as research. I would also like to see an institution where the industry looks up to, to where the industry looks up to the university as, as a source of um, a source of guidance and, and solution to some of the challenges. Student unrest has been said to be a major enemy to the University of Zambia. Most people now perceive the university as a trouble spot. Uh, let us teach our children how to look after property. Let us discipline them. It makes me very sad. Do you know that none of my children has come here? They cried when I told them, they said, no, they have all been educated abroad. They refused to come here because they said, we don't want to go to universities and because of unnecessary closures. And I had the capacity of sending them abroad. And, but it makes me sad. I'm hoping that my grandchild, who is waiting for uh, acceptance, will come here and stay at UNSA and um, be disciplined and finish her studies in good time. So when you come from school, enter university, it's a, it's a new experience. Uh, and for the first time, you are sort of free, you know, whatever that means. Um, <clears throat> so it's very easy to abuse the freedom, but then that freedom is very important because University education is not like school, it differs from school in that you are supposed to think on your own, not be spoon fed. And unless you are free, you cannot really think uh, properly. But again, as I said earlier, it's very important not to abuse that freedom that uh, the university offers. You need to look at the root cause of the problem. For instance, the recent unrest were about meal allowance. What about the meal allowance? The government could not give the students the meal allowance on time. Uh, many of the challenges, for instance, when you see that there's agitation is because the government, for instance, has failed to pay the lecturers. So the challenges that we do have at University of Zambia are self-made. The university prides itself in teaching, research and community service. Right now we have uh, the demonstration center this is a, a project which we've been doing. It's a China-aided project. And uh, we put up a facility um, at the Embe farm. I'm sure you've seen it. And um, that particular facility is, is, is called a demonstration center. And uh, it's a facility where, you know, we train farmers, for example, in short courses in various, you know, agricultural processes to the community. So that is just one, one example. The university has demonstrated over the past five decades its resolve to contributing to the building of Zambia. The university is providing the best teaching to its students. The university employees are the best lecturers in the country and hence provides higher quality teaching. The highest uh, policy making body in academic issues is the Senate, which has uh, very, very strict uh, regulations 
uh, in the manner that we conduct our um, functions. So I'm sure you must be aware that um, we do get a lot of appeals, for example, from students. Uh, maybe they failed and they still want to proceed and so on. We are very, very strict on that one. Uh, also, I'm sure you could also have heard that uh, you know getting promoted is quite hard at the University of Zambia because we've got set criteria. And uh, people have cried, you know, coming from elsewhere, and probably they are downgraded when they come to the University of Zambia. So all that is um, the activities that we've put in place, or the procedures we've put in place to make sure that, you know, we abide to our a motto of service and excellence. The students who come to the university are selected on merit. In the midst of all these challenges, the university has produced some of the most prolific scholars who have helped to shape not only Zambia and Africa but the globe at large. The University of Zambia remains a major beacon of hope for the nation and the continent at large. When I was here, ladies and gentlemen, I felt the most important person was a professor. That's, that was my view. To me, there was nobody who mattered more than a professor in, in, in the economy. Uh, of course, views have changed as uh, you grow up, but it was an honor to be exposed to these people, intellectually uh, talented people who gave us the world as they knew it. To me, that was very exciting. As the last 50 years pass by, there is renewed hope that the University of Zambia will be great again. I had the distinction of working with these two unique people who were the first permanent secretary and director of health services and also president to the, I mean, and also physicians to the president. That was uh, Joseph Kasunde, now the Honorable Minister, and Kit Jelsan. This record has not been achieved by anybody other than these two. And the fourth achievement was that they all worked for, for WHO, came back to Zambia. As the next 50 years dawns, there is renewed hope and optimism among stakeholders that the university will reclaim its place. The development at the park has come out, the Confucius Institution has come up, all the universities sections are developing. School of Medicine was just a school of medicine. Today, the School of Medicine is divided into four schools. Now, that is a very big achievement. Four schools, School of Public Health, Biomedical Sciences, Inter uh, School of Medicine, School of Nursing College, all these things are coming. And I tell you, that in the coming five years, you will see these schools coming up. The university is repositioning itself and making itself relevant both to society and the industry. The university has embarked on so many projects that will once completed give a new face to the institution. Of course the latest one is uh, the development that we have seen at East Park Moor, um, which was done by the PPP arrangement. Then we also have the Confucius Institute, which also has been uh, established at the University of Zambia, which is also going to alleviate the infrastructure uh, challenges that we are, we are facing. These changes have already started to show, as can be witnessed by the East Park Shopping Mall, the new Chinese Confucius Institute, the Zambia Agriculture and Technology Demonstration Center, the new Population Studies Building, the new students' hostels, and the new Unzo Radio Studios. These are only but the signs of great things that will transform the University of Zambia. Unza has come a long way. It's been 50 years of steady progress. All the stakeholders are more determined, like ever, to make the university even better. Everyone is working day and night to make Unza stand tall and a credible higher learning institution.
not just for Zambians, but for the global community too. Looking back on the past 50 years, we can all stand tall as a country and feel proud and free for our achievements. Yes, the challenges are many, but the determination and resolve is even greater. This for us has been 50 years of service and excellence.